Hi everybody, Salandia Hammond here, affectionately known as Sue Ham Baby. Hoping everybody is doing great. It is Thursday, November 21st. Should I buy my house now or should I wait? Should I buy my house now or should I wait? That is the question. My name is Salandia Hammond, aka Sue Ham Baby. I'm with loanswithsueham.com, powered by Edge Home Finance, and my NMLS number is 251. 9087. I want everybody to go ahead and share this video. I'm going to open up the group because sometimes you guys are commenting and I do not get to see it uh, on my phone. So I want to see, open it up in the group and see if there are any comments while I'm on here. All right. Jamie says, buy it now. Uh, I totally agree, Jamie. Buy it now. If you are in a position to buy it now, I'm going to lay out some things for you. And I know that you are highly intelligent and highly capable of making your own decisions. Okay. But I just want to lay out some things you may not have considered. So hear me out. Hear me out before you cuss me out now. Hear me out before you cuss me out. Because once you hear me out, you might not even cuss me out. Welcome to Coffee Chat, y'all. I want you to know you can share this video. Matter of fact, go ahead and take time right now and share it on your page. We want to help as many people as we can become homeowners and or investors if that is their choice. We want them to know that it is very possible. Don't count yourself out. Count yourself in. Change your mindset. Change your actions and do what's necessary to accomplish your desires. Do what's required to accomplish your desires. All right. So are you ready to go for it or are you still want to sit on the sidelines? Here's what I want to say to you. I know that a lot of you are waiting for those interest rates that we had four years ago. And I'm just going to tell you this. It's not going to happen. A lot of you have been waiting, 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 and interest rates have been fluctuating, 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 fluctuating. Those interest rates of 2%, 3% are not going to happen unless something catastrophic happens. And we're praying that that doesn't happen, okay? We know it's life and life be life and then sometimes things are going to happen. But, um, you know, something as crazy as four years ago probably won't happen for another 10 years. So... For those of you that are waiting for interest rates to go down or you're trying to predict the interest rate like you're Houdini and you keep getting it wrong, well, there's a reason for that. Because truthfully, honestly, nobody really knows when the interest rates are going to go up and go down except for the people who control the interest rates. Think about it now. But here's what I can tell you. That if you see a house that you like, that you are financially ready for, that, that, that you are credit ready for, that you are mentally ready for, go ahead and get that freaking house if you are in a position to buy. Here's why I say that. And you can go back and you can do the research. Houses in the last four years in certain areas have been appreciating $25,000 to $100,000 a year. So what am I saying? That if you bought a house four years ago, the equity in your home, your net worth could have potentially grown up in the last four years anywhere from $100,000 to $400,000. I'm not speaking in theory. I'm telling you what I know. I've talked to people um, who said to me, Sue, you're absolutely right. I bought my house three years ago, lived in it for two years, turned around and sold it and made $200,000. OK, so I want you to think about that. Buying now could potentially increase your net worth because your home will appreciate. The average person is selling their house within five to seven years. So if you have no intentions on staying in that house for yet, forever, just understand that buying now, you could potentially increase your net worth because your house is appreciating. I do know that in the Myrtle Beach area, certain areas, houses are appreciating at $100,000 a year. OK, uh, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I love the fact of living in a home, not doing anything to it, but the natural maintenance of it. Right. Uh, and knowing that the value is increasing anywhere between twenty five thousand to one hundred thousand dollars a year. So that's something to think about. Now, for those of you who are sitting on the fence and saying, um, I am waiting for the interest rate to drop and it could possibly drop. Have you also considered that if and when interest rates drop? that the housing price will go up. Think about that. Sellers are going to raise their housing prices because they know that you have more buying power. So with that being the case, 
Have you really saved anything when you sit and compare? See, here's the thing. When you're financing a house, right, and that loan amount, you're financing that loan amount, boom, that's that loan amount. You can't change that loan amount. However, if you get in at a 6% interest rate right now and interest rate go down to 4% in a year or two years, you can change the interest rate. So what am I saying? That in most cases, while you're waiting for interest rates to drop and housing prices are increasing, you're really not saving yourself. You're doing yourself a disservice. So uh, what you need to do is look at a financial plan for your life, right? Uh, hey, Melanie, good to see you. What you need to do is look at a financial plan for your life and see which is going to be more advantageous for you. Me personally, um, if you, I feel if you're in a position to buy, right, then you should buy. If interest rates are not exactly what you desire them to be, understand that eventually they will fall. And so at that time, if you're in a position, you can refinance and lower the interest rate. But don't allow an interest rate to stop you from buying a house now if you are financially uh, able to do it, mentally able to do it, and credit ready to do it. All right, so let's talk about this. Dream house versus a starter home. Ah, oh, man, some of y'all want these $10,000 homes, I mean, 10,000 square feet homes, 5,000 square feet homes, 3,000 square feet homes, when you really need to start out with a 1,200 square foot home, okay? Here, the data shows that the average person sells their home, they move within five to seven years now. We're not like our mothers and fathers, our grandparents, where they lived in a place for 40, 50 years until they transition. We're not that people anymore. We move. But here's what I want to suggest to you. Why not when purchasing your home, go into it thinking this is an investment. That's what I do when I'm purchasing homes. It's not just my rental properties or properties that I'm selling that I look at as, as investments. I look at my primary home as an investment. So for those of you wanting that dream home but you cannot afford it right now, start out with that starter home. Start out with a plan and a vision. Perhaps live there for two years, right? And then you can turn around and sell it. And if the home has appreciated, now you've made money. And uh, disclaimer, I'm not a tax strategist, okay? But there are certain laws out there that could apply to you to where if you've lived in that home for two years or more, when you sell that home, if you're a single person, you can get up to $250,000 in profit without it being taxed. If you're a married couple and the profits are 500,000 uh, or less, uh, you can get that money without it being taxed if that's what you make from the sale of your home. Let's say you don't want to sell your home. You want to move into the dream home now because you're now positioned to be able to get that dream home. And so now, you know, the starter home that you had, the thousand square feet, the 1200 square feet, instead of selling it, now you want to rent it. Well, guess what? Now you have two properties because you're going to buy a new one to live in, I'm sure. You have two properties as investment properties. You have the first home that you bought that you're now renting and you have the new home that you're going into, into an area that is appreciating so that you continue to build the equity in your home so that you can continue to build your net worth. Why do you want to be in an area that is appreciating and building your equity and net worth? Well, it's quite simple because at some point in time, you will probably refinance your home. And why do people refinance their homes? Well, one is to lower the interest rate, but more often people are refinancing their homes because they want to take the equity out, AKA cash, to do other things. Like for example, start a business, pay off uh, bills. I was speaking to a loan partner on Tuesday, Tuesday, and he said, uh, yo Sue, we just refinanced the client the client had, uh, I think, a 3% interest rate, right? But they just refinanced the client because the client had a bunch of bills. And with the refinance and paying off all those bills, using the equity out of their home to pay off all those bills, the client freed up $2,400. Come on, somebody in disposable income. So when I tell people to use your home as your bank, I really mean it. I do it. I recommend people do it if you are financially savvy, if you are in that position to do so. Use your home as a bank. Do not, though, do not, do not, do not refinance your home and get cash to buy a car, right? Unless that car is going to generate you some money. Do not refinance your home, take that cash out, and go sailing around the world unless you're sailing around the world with some pretty influential and important people who are going to have an impact on your life that's going to cause 
profits to flood into your life, the more cash to flood into your life. What am I saying? Do not, do not pull the equity out of your home, the cash out of your home. If you do not have a plan to use that money to make it make more money. Come on somebody. Okay. So, um, I wanted to put that out there. Hey, Michael, welcome to the coffee chat. Um, Michael is a team partner of mine. Michael, I was just sharing with them how one of our team partners, um, John, said that he just refinanced somebody on Tuesday. The person had a great interest rate, but the person wasn't concerned about the interest rate because they were over their head in debt. And so uh, John was able to help them refinance them and free up $2,400 of disposable income. So I wanted to share that with you guys. So let's go back and do a recap. We've been on here now about 10 minutes. If you guys have any questions, I'm willing to take it. Thanks, Michael. Um, I'm asking everybody to go ahead and share this broadcast. Our group is growing like crazy. I think we have about a 550 people in this group, maybe more than that. I want to thank you guys for inviting people. But the recap is, should I wait to buy my house or should I buy it now? If you are financially, mentally, and credit worthy, ready to buy your house, go for it. And like I told you guys before, go through the group. You don't have to have perfect credit to buy a house, right? I, I, I always say I think the money is the most important thing, in my opinion. Uh, be financially ready. Uh, so should I buy a house now or should I wait? Hey, go for it if you are ready. Waiting does not guarantee that the house prices will be lower or the interest rates will be lower. If the interest rates are lower, I can tell you right now, I sell my properties, I fix properties and I sell them, I'm raising the prices. So that's what's going to happen with a lot of sellers. They're going to raise the prices. So in essence, if the interest rate lowers and the house prices goes up, are you saving anything? No. So it's best to get in now, in my humble opinion, and then refinance once the rates go down. Also, you get in now, you start building appreciation. Uh, your house starts to appreciate if it's in an appreciating area. You start building equity, which means you start building your net worth, which means your house starts to become a bank for you. Remember, you can use your house as a bank. The average person moves within five to seven years. So if you want to move now, you should have equity in your home so you can either sell your home, get those profits, or put that home up for rent refinance it, still get the profits out, you know, and put it up for rent and let the tenant pay that mortgage. And then you move into another house and you continue to do this rinse and repeat and you can become a homeowner and an investor. All right. So I wanted to put that out there. And the last thing is, I know we all have a dream house. We have a vision, but baby, my mama always told me you got to crawl before you walk. So if you got to start with a, a small home, an affordable home, there's nothing wrong with that, especially if that home is in an area that's appreciating, baby. And especially if your plans are to turn that home into an investment property and rent it out, then you're just taking steps to accumulate your wealth, to accumulate your time freedom and your financial freedom to build something for your family. So get in where you fit in. And then once you no longer fit, baby, once you're busting out the seams, then it's time for you to expand. Then it's time for you to go up to the next level. So if you're watching this on the replay, I want to thank you. If you're watching this and it's not inside my group, Buying and Refinancing Homes in South Carolina, I would like to invite you into the group where we do coffee chats at 7.30 a.m. We've got a lot of information on home buying. We're going to be bringing in speakers to talk about home inspections, talk about investment properties, talk about appraisals, all kinds of great stuff associated with buying your primary home, vacation home, and or investment home. And also about refinancing, taking that money out of the four walls of your house. Well, you probably have more than four walls, but you understand what I'm saying. Taking that money out of your house and using it to do something uh, uh, consistent, not consistent, what's the word I'm trying to use? To do something... Um, um, Good. We'll just go with good to do something good with it, to build up your net worth. Okay. So share this group, join the group. It is buying and refinancing in South Carolina. Look for the lady with the gold hair. We welcome you in. We've got a lot of videos. If you are new to the home buying process, I invite you to go to my website loans with suham.com and download our free PDF and our free video that explains the home buying process. And inside this group, we have a lot of information. So go through it, guys. Look at the videos. Look at the PDFs. Again, uh, in closing, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I want to ask you to listen to this song. I'm listening to it for the last couple of days. Um, it's called Grace by Kiara Sheard. Grace 
by Kiara Sheard. You have the power to do everything, man. Anything that you want, anything that you desire, you have what's inside of you.